Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Sadiq and this is my Nintendo Switch which today I'm going to be installing this Pico Fly mod chip the mod chip comes with 4 bits this is the this is the uh, RP2040 chip, that's what it's called. And it comes with two flex cables, flex ribbon cables. So this one is the for the V1. So that's the original uh, version that released of the console. But I will be using this one. This is uh, for the version of the console that was patched. And that's the one I got. I know that because I checked on the there's a website where you can put in the serial number and it will tell you if it's patched or not. This one, this is the USB C socket which you use if you need to program this uh, with the Pico Fly firmware. I will be using this to flash the latest version of the firmware on here. Okay, so that's what I'm going to be doing. Let's get started. Alright, to begin with, we need to make sure that it's been flashed with the right firmware. It may have been already flashed, but uh, I'm going to do it anyway for the video. So when doing this, you need the USB, USB port. It needs to be plugged into the the Pico Fly chip itself into that port and then push the latch down so now that's connected what we're doing next is let me get the recording ready so what we need next is we need to download the latest firmware at the time of this recording this video is 2.73 so we just click on here and then click on download raw file it's a small file you should download very quickly all right so what you need to do now is you want to press and hold this button and plug in the usb cable so it's already connected to my pc and and press this button the left side one and plug it in. And it will show up as a, it will just show up as a USB drive. And all you need to do, delete the two files that are in there and copy this firmware file over. It will copy very quickly once it's copied it will automatically eject itself and that's complete okay so you don't need this usb part anymore so you can take that off but i would keep it in case uh, i need to update the firmware again All right, so now time to disassemble, disassemble the Nintendo Switch. Take the Joy-Cons off. And also take the, we've got SD card in there. Take the SD card out. And if there's a game in there, Take the game out as well. And now you need you need a tri wing and a cross head. And these are screwdrivers I got from different kits. These are the correct ones. So you got 
total screws you need to remove you need to remove this one these two here these two here there's one near the micro SD slot and you need to take the middle one out from the rails Joy-Con rails and from the bottom you need to take out the two nearest to the uh, USB-C port okay so I'm going to take all of those screws out Okay, so the screws that are out and they are different types, four different types of screws. So you should keep a track of them. Yeah, you might want to write it down or something like that. But I'm pretty sure I can remember what those, uh, which screws that go where. Well, now using a, some sort of prime tool, preferably a plastic tool because you don't want to cause any damage and that will be the back completely off once you get to this stage there's a few more screws so the ones you need to remove are the ones the one holding the micro SD card slot and all the screws that are on this metal shield and these are all cross heads and that should be all of them what you also need to do is pull out the SD card slot it's plugged in like a Lego one that will just come out we can put that to the side and this metal shield should now come off yep, there's one more screw here And there is actually one more screw here. So make sure you get all the screws out before you start pulling too hard. And that's the back off. So also what I'm going to do, I'm going to be cleaning up so I'm going to be cleaning up all the thermal paste as I go along. Also I'll be using some cotton buds and some isopropyl alcohol, 99% to clean it up. And I can also keep this to a side as well. And here we need to remove the the heat sink and uh, fan assembly or the heat sink assembly and that's also a crosshead screws it's three of them uh, so I can lift it up now and the heat, heat pipe itself is taped to the fan so these will get torn off when bringing it up there's no avoiding that can try and do it a bit neater 
but you won't be able to see this anyway. I keep this to a side as well. But before we'll do that, I'll clean this up as well. Maybe I can use this knife. There's a few clips, they're very small. If I can zoom in there, yeah. So, see if you see there, there's a slight lip under there. So you have to be very careful, take your time. You don't want to damage anything in the process. Okay, so my camera stopped recording. I didn't realize it. But all I did was uh, I opened a few more clips. Once I opened a few of this side, the rest just kind of came off. So yeah, sorry about that. And, and another thing I noticed, really silly mistake, is I didn't remove the battery before I started messing about with it. So don't do what I did, take this out then you know there's no power running into the system hope i haven't broken my nintendo switch 
Okay, so another thing I realized is the layout is for the V1. So although this is the patched console, still requires the V1, uh, V1, the, the flex cable. And I'm guessing there is a slight overlap because according to my serial number, this is uh, the patched version of the console. All right, so now I'm going to be moving over to my microscope. And so, yeah. All right, so to begin with on the flex cable, I'm going to be tinning it with some solder. So that's going to be, I'm going to apply some flux. That's the flex cable tinned up. I'm going to put this soft cloth so I don't damage the screen on my Nintendo Switch. So this part of the cable needs to go under this piece of shielding. And need to align. There's too much solder on, to, on that point. Okay, so that's pretty lined up. Now that's that's lined up. I can solder them in so that they don't move around. And now Using my tweezers, Maybe I'll put a little bit of flux on then give it a bit more. It was very small and I can't tell. I think that one's on there good.
Yeah, that looks on there good now. Still not fully sure about this one. Okay, that looks like it's on there good. I think I should clean off the flux. We also have to make a path for for this cable to come out from the top here. So for that, we need to flatten a part of this shield which I'm just going to do with some pliers. So that won't interfere with that cable. You know, I think I'm going to actually cut them off. I think I'm going to cut it off like this. And then use the pliers again to flatten it again. One more step, we want to put captain tape over here on, on the solder point so that they don't short out against the shield. So for that I'm using captain tape. See there, just cover up those solder points. And now, so we want to put this back together. So we need some new fresh thermal paste on there. I have some Arctic MX2, which I'm going to use. That might be a bit too much. And we want to, the NAND chip, this is the NAND chip, we want to take that off. That's just clipped on as well. It might bring this piece with it, we have to take that off. And the shield can go back on there. Because this NAND chip is going to clip onto our mod chip. Just like that. So now this is going to be the fiddly part because I need to get this cable. Into this port. 
Now, how am I going to do that? I don't know if you can see that, but I did manage to get it in there and I did get the latch down and now I can push that in there. So that's connected in there. And I believe I can test it before I go further. But before I do that, I wanna insulate this part from this. And for that, I will use some more captain tape. So now that's insulated, that should be safe there. So to test it, I can put the battery back on and just plug it back in. And if we power on the system, it should say no SD card. Yeah. So if you look on there, it's showing no SD card. So it's looking for an SD card. So that means the install isn't successful. So we can just power it off again. And again, I'm gonna move the battery while I do the rest of the works. So another thing we need to do is we need to cut a area out for the, the chip to stay. So I'm gonna mark the area which would be a market there. So that will be around here. To around Yeah. And since this sheet is quite thin, I should be able to just cut it with scissors, a slightly heavier duty scissors. So now if you see, we've cleared a space for the chip to stay. All right, so now a lot of the assembly is just what we did previously in reverse. So, so I'm gonna put some more thermal paste on here. and place the heat sink back on there. And there was three screws for that. And we also got to put some more thermal grease on this part here. Yeah, I'll plug the battery back in now. And now we got some screws to put in here, and these are all cross set as well. Oh 
will have the SD card reader could go back in. This one will just click back in. You can feel the click. And there's a screw for that as well. So the SD card slot clicks back in. Okay, and now the back can go on. Should all snap into each corners. And then we've got screw on the top. That's the mod chip install complete. This is why I should say when you don't have a, a SD card that's been correctly set up and that's expected. Okay, so if you like the video, give it a like. If you want to see more like this, subscribe to the channel and I will catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.